Well, welcome. Hi, everybody, near and far. Uh, it's Monday, another Monday. My name is Leslie, and this is going to be a 45 minute vinyasa. Um, just a little bit shorter, so we're going to move a little faster. Um, the Shavasana might not be 10 minutes long, but I hope to get your heart rate up a little bit and to re energize you, especially me right now. I'm feeling really heavy today, you know, um, three and a half weeks into self isolation. This is one of those days where, you know, you try to be grateful for everything because I have my health, I have safety, I have the privilege of having a home and an income. Um, but it doesn't mean that I don't have emotions and that I'm still not, you know, sad and frustrated sometimes because, you know, it's 24 seven <laughs> of being around your loved ones. And while that's amazing on paper, <laughs> it's a lot, you know, you know, it's a lot. Um, cause you know, that alone time, that time to just be reflective and go inside, it's very sacred. And I am now very, very grateful for that. And I am hopeful for when that day happens again, um, to just go and sit on the beach for hours and hours and hours and listen to the waves. So maybe we can imagine that we're all doing that together. We can close our eyes on our mat and imagine that we are at our favorite place. Okay, so let's find our way down to our backs into a little mini Shavasana. And start to settle in here as you take an inhale through your nose and an audible sigh out through the mouth. Maybe wiggling the fingers and the toes or stretching if you need to feel a little bit more right now. Just feeling with whatever you have. And then calming down, slowing down the movement in your body if you chose to move. Slowing down your breath, bringing it inward rather than ujjayi. And notice how you feel. You know, maybe you're having a day where you're feeling very content, santosha, or maybe you're like me right now and just feeling a little bit of overwhelmness, not really sure how to feel. Allow your feelings to be. And don't make an excuse, don't go with your story of I shouldn't or I should, just be with what is. Knowing that it'll pass, the good and the bad, natural ways of life. And then find your happy place. Maybe you have your windows open and you can hear the rain falling down if you're in California. Or maybe your happy place is on a beach in Hawaii, feeling the warm rays beat down on your skin. The cawing of seagulls, the salty breeze. Or maybe you're in a forest under the redwoods. Imagine you're taking a moment in your favorite place, breathing in the air. Feeling all five senses awaken. Taking one last breath wherever you are, saying goodbye to your happy place. I'll see you soon. And then finding your way into happy baby pose, bringing your knees to your chest, 
and then taking your hands to the outside edges of your feet if that feels okay for you. If it doesn't, feel free to grab onto the, the shins or even right below the knees. I'm gonna let my dog in really quick. <laughs> And then if it feels okay, start rocking side to side, left to right, massaging the length of, not the length, the sides of the vertebrae. Mm -hmm. Bringing your feet together, knees go wide. And taking your hands, if you can, to the outside of your feet and pulling them in towards your body, towards your torso. So you might feel this along the inner thighs, the hip flexors, the outer thighs. Just depends on where you are today. Notice if you're holding tension in your neck or upper shoulders, your traps. See if you can soften there and just stretch the lower body. Where can you soften? And then keeping your right leg the way it is, reaching your left leg out to the side. So you're gonna actually roll to the outside edge of the left hip. The left knee can come down to the ground and extend the leg as long as you can. It might be a huge bend in your knee right now because we haven't done much to warm up and our houses are freezing compared to a yoga studio. So you can see my knee is still bent about 30 degrees here. But the goal is to get my hip down and the top of my thigh down. And then to kick my foot long, my leg long as I can. And we'll be here about 10 seconds. So you can create a little bit more space along the back hamstring, behind your knee, perhaps somewhere along your foot. And over time, Eventually the leg straightens a little bit more until maybe you're lucky and you're super flexible and then your foot ends up touching the ground as well. So I'm laying on my left side almost here. I'm not on my back. Mm -hmm. Okay, drawing the left leg back in to that version of butterfly pose. Keeping the left knee bent this time as you roll to the outer edge of the right side of your body and slowly the right knee comes down and you start pushing your foot away from you slowly, slowly. I cannot express how slow. You want it to be so slow that it's not forceful. It's just this natural opening of your body because you're giving it time to feel. You're giving it time without fear. And there's no weight here. So you notice when you're sitting up in a wide straddle, you might feel more resistance to opening up in this pose because you have that extra body weight on it and your body is trying to protect you. So this is a way to do it in a safer, more cautious way. Three more breaths. See if the leg can straighten just a little bit more. How's that feel? Yeah, exhale back to happy baby pose. Take a moment just to notice if it's a little bigger, a little more expansive. And then we're gonna roll ourselves up, taking our knees into our chest, rocking and rolling up and down. Massaging your spine. And we're gonna find our way all the way standing into Dasana. So maybe you rock and roll yourself, plant your feet, root your feet, and root to rise. Maybe that seems impossible. What the heck did she just do? And you just come up here, roll to your side, and come up any way that feels natural to you until you come into mountain pose. Closing your eyes here, pausing and feeling. And so we're gonna do a little bit of shaking here. Every once in a while, I start to notice that my body is starting to hold on to this tension and to this energy that just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel bad, but it doesn't feel good. And so we start to shake out the wrists, loosen, a little softer here. So notice if you're holding any tension, soften the knees slightly, soften the elbows, and just do a little shake. Maybe the knees start to move as well. The ankles, maybe you start to even lift the heels. Maybe the shoulders start to shrug. 
You can move your head side to side. Maybe you start to jump in a circle around your mat. Maybe the movements become bigger. Maybe you stay small. Maybe you shake your legs. There's lots of options. Where do you feel the tension? And see if you can move it out. So if it's in your shoulders, you big movements here. Shake, shake, shake. I know this is silly. At least we're being silly together, yeah? <laughs> Let's do it for 10 more seconds. Do you want to shake? Do you want to shake me? My dog is right here. <laughs> Staring at me like the crazy human I am. All right. Slowly start decreasing the shaking. If you have any more extra shakes, flick out the fingers and then come back to the top of your mat, toes together, heels slightly apart, mountain pose. And before moving on, root the feet and then find space in your heart to feel what that did to you. Did it move your energy around? It definitely got my blood flowing. <laughs> Opening your eyes here, inhale, sweeping your arms up, palms up. Exhale as you soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, either fingertips on the ground or hands to shins, flat back. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Working on a straight spine from the tailbone through the crown of your head. So notice if you're gazing up or down too much, we want a neutral cervical spine. Exhale. Soften the knees as you grab your elbows and allow your head to hang heavy. Pulling down the elbows a little closer to the ground as your hips lift in the opposite direction. Up, up, up. Exhale, hands come down to the ground. Step the right foot back. Drop down the knee, shifting your gaze forward. Tucking the back foot. Inhale as you lengthen the front leg. Bow over. Mm -hmm. We're going to move through here a few times. Inhale. On Janae. Exhale. Forward fold. Three more times. Moving with your breath on the inhale, going forward. On the exhale, hips go back. And each one, maybe you find a little bit deeper of a low lunge in the hips. And maybe that front leg straightens a little bit more where you can actually lift the toes off the ground. I feel that in a different part of my leg when I do that. Last one. Mm -hmm. Coming back into your low lunge, taking your right hand to the very inside edge of that big toe, as close as you can basically get it, lifting the left arm up to the sky for a twist. Now you can stay here with that back knee down on the ground or start to engage the core as though there's a little strawberry in between your thigh and belly button and then start to lift the knee up to the sky, twisting the rib cage up. Mm -hmm. One more breath. Exhale, pivoting the back heel down to the ground. Warrior two. Inhale. Exhale, reverse warrior. One breath. And exhale, elbow to knee, extended side angle pose, reaching your heel down to the ground and your fingertips up and away. Eventually working for one straight line from that right heel to right fingertips. So you'll notice over time that left knee will need to bend a little bit more to get that straight line. So take your time, no rush. It might take 20 years. It might take one hour. So yeah, exhale as you bring both hands down to the ground, pivoting the back heel over the toes. Inhale, kick that left leg up high, squaring the hips. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, kick it back out. Exhale, a little bit closer, knee to nose. If you want to bring it a little closer, you can even take that. No, we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Inhale, kick it back out. Sorry. 
Exhale, bring the knee to the nose one more time. I was gonna say take your hand to squeeze it in, but I have no balance today. Yeah, and then inhale, left leg reaches. This time, stacking the hips, left hip over right, bending the knee, hamstring curl. Do everything you can to kick your heel to your sit bone. So you might feel a little cramping up there in that top thigh, that's good. <laughs> that's good, you say, yes. Inhale, lift the right heel off the ground. Exhale, lower. One more, inhale, lift that heel as high as you can. Exhale, bring that left foot through on the outside of the left hand. I call this dragon pose. Lizard is when your knee is down. Dragon is a more powerful version of a lizard, so let's be a dragon, keeping that back thigh lifted, and really try to lift the kneecap up a little bit more so we're straightening that space behind the knee. Mm -hmm. We'll be here for three. And two. One, we're just gonna play here, we're not gonna fly yet. Take the right, le the left shoulder and dip it underneath the left leg. Left shoulder dip underneath the leg. Maybe you can walk your hand out and then back in. Walk it out and in. And then bring it behind the diagonal of that left heel. Just feel it. And then maybe you start to put a little weight forward. Just playing. All right. Bring your hands back to center. Tucking the back foot if it's not already. Inhale, send the left leg up high. Exhale. Send the left leg through, and then taking the right leg forward to meet the left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Mm -hmm. Sitting in your chair, bringing your palms together, heart center, twisting over to your right. Pushing the right palm down into the left. And you can stay here in your twisted chair, or if you'd like, reaching your arms up away from each other. Left fingertips might touch the ground. And if you wanted to play with side crow here, go ahead. You can stay here if you have no idea what that is. Otherwise, drop the hips to bring your hands down to the ground. And for this side crow, a little trick is to walk your feet forward towards the left side of your hands, and then start to shift your chest forward and your knees might lift gazing towards your knees, or your knees are already lifted, sorry. One more breath if you would came in a side crow. Exhale, whew. Exalting your side crow, or your um, twisted chair. Yeah, back to chair. Inhale as though you're coming up out of water. Exhale, release. Tadasana, how'd you do? Okay, <laughs> I'm running out of breath. Inhale, chair pose. I gotta take it down a notch. Exhale, hands together, twisting over to your left. And so now you know where we're going. Maybe you stay here pushing your left hand into your right, peeling the rib cage, spiraling it up. Or maybe you open your arms out wide, feeling it more in your shoulders. Or if you wanted to go back into side crow, hands come down to the ground, left knee on the left elbow as you walk your feet forward, looking towards your feet, starting to drop, 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 send the chest through, oh gosh. I cannot do it on that side today. Maybe you can. <laughs> I could fall on my face, but I don't want to right now. Inhale back to twisted chair. And then coming into regular chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands come down to the ground, stepping your left foot back, dropping the knee on Janae, sending your chest forward, squeezing your shoulder blades behind you so your shoulder heads find more space. Tucking the back foot. Once again, hips lift while you begin to slowly straighten that front leg. No rush. And then going back into your low lunge on the inhale. Exhale, hips lift, bow forward. Three more, your own breath. If you're feeling really open, feel free to push the heel down in your forward fold as the toes lift off the ground. Mm -hmm. Last one.
Beautiful. Anjane Asana. Okay. Taking the left hand this time, close to that right foot. Right arm comes up for a twist. Once again, you have an option to stay here with the knee down or take that left foot, tuck, and lift the knee. And we'll be here for three. One, exhale, bringing the hand down, pivoting the back heel, inhale, warrior two. Settling into that front foot, feeling your feet root to every, the four corners of both foot, the right and the left. So oftentimes that left foot, you might be putting a little bit more weight on the inside edge. See if you can evenly distribute the weight. As you exhale, reverse your warrior. Expanding through the side body. Inhale. Exhale. Elbow to knee. Top arm spirals down and up. Extended side angle. Now maybe you're one of those people that brings your arm up overhead. That's fine. But if you're like me, I have a bit of shoulder stickiness. Kind of feels like early onset arthritis. Or I just have some pain that I'm dealing with. It actually feels more open in my shoulder when I bring it down and up. So give it a try. See how it feels for you. And maybe use that as your pattern instead of old patterns. Whatever feels better for your body, right? Mm -hmm. Inhale, coming back up into warrior two. Exhale, hands come down, pivoting the back heel over the toes. Inhale, send your right leg up high, keeping your hips square. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, kick it back out. Exhale, a little bit closer. One more. This time, inhale, as you kick your leg out, stack the hips, right hip over left, bending the knee and drawing that right heel as close as you can to your sit bones. Hugging those muscles into your bones as much as you can for three, two, one. Inhale, lengthen the right leg. Exhale, bring it to the outside of the right hand, back into your dragon pose. Mm -hmm. Once again, dragon pose is like lizard except we're not resting here. It's an active one. Don't worry, we'll have time to rest soon. This is only a 45 minute class. So I'm trying to get our heart rate up quickly before the cool down in about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. I don't even know, 10 minutes. <laughs> Time's fast. Okay, so maybe you stay here with your hands directly underneath your shoulders, or maybe you start to play with dropping that shoulder down, the right shoulder grips or drops slides down and then you walk your right hand, slide it through and then bring it back and then try it again and then bring it back. Once again, bring that hand right behind the heel of your foot. Mm -hmm. Put weight into that right hand and then come back up, bringing that right foot behind you, downward facing dog. Exhale, dropping down to your knees, coming to the center of your mat gate pose. So bringing the right knee underneath the right hip, left leg reaches out long. Inhale, send your right arm up. Exhale as you lean over to your left. Once again, we're creating space along the side body here. So root the knee. Your knee is now your foot. Whatever's in contact with the ground, that is what's rooting. So your knee is pushing down as you lengthen all the way from your knee to your hip, through the rib cage, to the fingertips. Mm -hmm. One more breath. Exhale, taking your right hand down to the mat. The left arm reaches up overhead. So looking at that left foot, noticing if the whole sole of the foot is down the ground. And you can stay here in the supported Vashisasana side plank, or you can lift that right knee off the ground, bringing it closer to the sky, and then drop the knee back down. Maybe you lift the knee again and straighten the leg. 
and then drop the knee back down. We'll try it one more time. Lift the knee, hug it in. You can even take your left hand, hug it in close to your chest, or kick it out. Uh-huh, beautiful. Bring the right knee down, coming back into gate pose. Inhale, sending your right arm up high. Exhale if you'd like. Right hand comes down to the ground, sorry. We're gonna do a little back bend here first. Left arm reaches up, and you're gonna do a little twist where you're reaching the left arm behind you, coming to that tuck back foot. If you can reach the heel, awesome. Start to lean your left hand down to the ground as you reach your right arm up overhead. Hips go forward. It's like a camel and a gate combined. One more breath. Beautiful, exhale. How'd that feel? A little ridiculous? It might have been. Good thing we have two sides, okay? The left leg is now your root. Knee rooted over the hip. Right leg extends out long. Inhale, send your left arm up. Exhale as you lean over to your right. Soften where you can soften. Lengthen where you can lengthen. This is an opportunity to find your breath again, to slow down the inhale, to slow down the exhale. And then exhale as you sweep the left hand down to the ground, right arm reaches up overhead into your supported side plank. So if you feel that your hips don't feel very good, you can always scoot your knee down to wherever feels good in your body. And if you really wanna play with lifting that left leg off the ground, if you're on the inner edge of that back foot, you're not gonna have enough support. You're gonna feel really wobbly. So really draw that right foot down so the entire sole of the foot is in the ground, okay? And then maybe you take your hand to your left knee and hug it into your chest. And then bring it back down. So then you have a little support, because our legs are really heavy. Bring it back in. And if you're straightening the leg, go ahead, straighten the leg. And we'll do one more. Little oblique work and hip flexor work. Yes, exhale, that's it. Coming back down to the ground. This time you're gonna tuck that left foot coming into gate pose one more time. Right arm reaches up, left leg down, right arm up. Doing a little twist, so we're sending that right arm away. You can stay here where you're just twisting out to the side as that back bend didn't feel good on you, okay? Do a little twist, wax on, wax off. Otherwise twist, find the heel, and then start to lift the hips forward, sternum moves a little further away from the ribs. One more breath. Beautiful, exhale, coming out, child's pose. Let's bring our knees together if you can for this child's pose, if it feels okay. Arms down to your sides, forehead on the ground. Pause and feel. Bring your hands back underneath the shoulders, and you can choose to go straight to downward dog from here, or maybe you need another vinyasa. Since I'm teaching the class, I want to conserve my breath, so I'm going to skip a vinyasa. But if you'd like to do a vinyasa, shift your weight forward into high plank. Take an inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog if your back is feeling good. And then exhale, downward facing dog as we all join together. Maybe wag your tail a little bit here. You can take such a big wag in the tail that you lift up your heels and do a rainbow with the feet. So you lift your heels and then lower the inside and outside edge of one foot. And then once again, lift the heels and roll over to the other side. Mm -hmm. One more rainbow on each side. Pushing your hands into the ground to keep the hips lifted up high. One more. There you go. Beautiful. Inhale. Exhale as you walk your hands back to meet your feet. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Taking your peace fingers. Grabbing onto your big toes. And then forward fold. Shaking your head yes. Or no here. Okay.
taking your left hand to your hip, keeping your right fingertips wrapped around your big toes, rooting the left foot as you slowly start to straighten and stand, drawing your right knee into your chest. So you can keep your hand wrapped around your big foot, working on bringing the knee a little bit closer to your chest. You can take that left hand, that's fine. Steady gaze wherever you are. And then once again, like we did on Happy Baby, just see how much you can straighten that leg. It might only straighten a few inches. The knee might still be at a 30 degree or 45 degree angle until eventually you find your mobility for today. And then opening out to your side, right leg reaches out to the side, steady gaze, maybe your left gaze shifts over the left shoulder. I start to lose my words halfway through the practice because I'm losing my breath, moving with you. It's a new challenge as a teacher, talking and flowing the whole time with you. I'm not used to it. Bringing your foot in. And now suck that femur bone into the hip socket. Suck it in as much as you can. So you're gonna feel that low core engage. You're gonna have a little curve of the shoulders here, a, a protraction of the shoulder blade. And then slowly start to lower that right foot down until it's hovering right off the ground, right? You might already have your foot on the ground, that's okay. If not, bring it down. Inhale, standing up tall. Shake out the hands, finger flicks. Oh, hurt this finger. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do the other side. Bending the knees here so you can bring your left hand to your big toe. Right hand to hip. Root the right foot. Find something unmoving to look at. It might be on the ground, it might be straight ahead. I prefer starting on the ground. Keep your gaze steady as you start to root the right foot and lift the left leg until the left knee comes into your chest. Are you still looking at that same spot? Yeah. Okay, maybe your gaze shifts up straight ahead to something in your eye line, and then you can start to kick your leg out in front of you. Each side is different. You might have more or less flexibility on this side. And once you're there, open out. Mm -hmm. Keep looking steady drishti or slightly slowly shift the gaze over the right shoulder. Head over heart, over hips, over heels. The 4-H club. Okay, inhale as you bring that left leg back to your forward position. Suck the leg bone into the hip bone, hip hole, and then start to bring yourself back down. Mm -hmm. Exhale, left leg lowers, release, finger flick, shake, shake, shake. Find your way back to the front of the mat, mountain pose. Inhale, sweeping your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step, jump, or float back into high plank. One inhale here. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra, or upward facing dog. We're gonna spend three breaths here, okay? So wherever you are, see if you can pull your shoulder heads away from each other, creating more space in the front of the chest. If you can, and your low back is okay with it, push the tops of your feet down so your knees lift. One more breath. And then moving with your core muscles, exhale, lift the core until you come into downward facing dog, flipping over the feet. Okay, we're gonna take that left heel and draw it down to the ground. So the whole left foot is down on the ground and then kick the right leg up to the sky. Mm -hmm. Maybe you stay here, maybe you lift your left arm up into the sky. If you want to bend the knee, reach back for that foot. Where is it? Kick into your hand for three, two, one. Exhale, left hand comes down, right foot comes down. So if you don't pivot your heel so your foot is down the ground, this pose is not going to happen because you're not going to have enough stability. So really root that right foot this time. So bring the right heel down more towards the center. Toes are facing away. Lift the left leg. You may stay here. This is enough. So the way to find balance here is to push your hands into the ground to lift the hips. You're really pushing away from yourself, yeah. Then bend the right leg, opposite arm lifts. So that right arm lifts, reaches back into air. You can't see anything, it's hard to find anything. That's okay. It might just be air for a while. For three, two, one, exhale. What the heck? 
Downward facing dog. Yeah, inhale. Exhale, bending the knees. Stepping or jumping to the front of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale down. Sending that right leg back. Coming into your low lunge again. Anjaneyasana. And then shifting your weight back, this time for half Hanuman, half split. So if you have blocks, which I recommend getting some if you're gonna be practicing at home now, you can get them really cheap on Amazon um, or other stores. In fact, uh, Manduka, is it Man I think they're having a, um, a thing with Breathe right now. So if you go to the Breathe website or ask Jen Wu, you can put in a code and get um, some of your percentage of your order from Manduka sent to Breathe. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna shift our weight back and forward from half Hanuman, half split into your low lunge. And so I like to use my blocks as an extension of my hands or my arms because my legs are way longer than my arms. <laughs> you might have long arms. Um, you know, we're all built differently. And if you're coming into half Hanuman, let's stay here for a little bit, flexing your toes up, sending energy out through your heel. Inhale as you straighten the spine. Exhale, forward fold, whatever capacity you need to. Okay, and then we're gonna find our way all the way down to a seat, bringing our right knee forward, left foot will be behind us, okay? So if this isn't possible, feel free to bring a pillow or a blanket or a block underneath your sit bones so both sit bones can be down on the ground. Inhale, exhale, hands from the hips, coming down halfway. Now you can still be playing with the Anjaneyasana and half Hanuman right now, and still be getting a very similar benefit. And then we'll all join in about three more breaths on the ground. Okay, inhale, rise. And then we're gonna take that right foot, take it off the ground as we bring it in to the inside edge of our body. So we're making about a 90 degree angle here, not Janu Shirshasana, Janu would be right in front. This one's out more open. Inhale, sending your arms up. Exhale as you lean over to the left. So it's almost like gate pose and the same sensation, except now our root is our right sit bone, not our right knee. So just as much as you were rooting that right knee on gate pose, now root the right hip. Right arm reaches up. And then exhale, coming back up, taking your hands to your rib cage, shifting the rib cage toward that left leg that's extended straight, and then start to fold forward here. You can bring your hands down to the ground or reach towards the foot. If you wanna add a little twist into this end of the torso, take that right hand on the pinky edge side of the foot and do a little twist here. Allow your neck to be in whatever position feels best. And then walking your hands back to center. We're gonna go into a half straddle. If you wanna go into a full straddle, go ahead. But I find this is a little bit easier if you have tighter hips. Inhale, extending the spine long. Shift from the hips forward, keeping a straight spine. And eventually you can only go down so far. Maybe you drop down your elbows. Maybe you drop down all the way to the chest. No rush. Take your time wherever you go. And like I said, if you're one of my flexible friends, feel free to extend both legs out long. If you're like my husband, he's an avid cyclist, he would be using two blocks right here. And this would be enough. So work with your own body. I can't cycle more than a half mile without feeling winded. And he can't do this, you know? We practice what we practice. Okay, beautiful. Moving your blocks out of the way. We're gonna find our way back into downward facing dog. Boy oh boy, is time flying quickly. Inhale, send the left leg up high. Exhale, bring it to the 
inside of a foot low lunge. Did we already do this five? Yeah, we did. Ignore it. We did, right? <laughs> See, I don't even know. <laughs> but I think we did. I'm going to lift my right leg up and then exhale, bring my right foot through. I honestly don't know right now. If somebody wants to comment below. But we're going to do, once again, low lunge to half Hanuman. I'm pretty sure 95% it's the right leg forward. That's what my leg is telling me right now. And we're gonna shift our weight into low lunge, back into half Hanuman. You can find your blocks so you can have longer arms. Some might call this inauthentic yoga. I say use props as much as you like because it allows your body to feel the pose in a safe way for your body. So you actually feel like, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like versus forcing your body into a shape that it's not ready for yet. And then you can't really get the benefits of the practice. So we're gonna come into that half Hanuman, half splits. So you can keep your hands on your blocks. Whenever you're ready to come down to a forward fold over the front leg, go ahead. Like I said, you can stay here. If you wanna bring your sit bones all the way down to the ground, left foot down, left knee down, and forward fold here, you can do that as well. Don't worry, we're gonna all be down to the ground soon, about five more breaths, wherever you chose to go. Hopefully you're feeling a stretch along the right leg. Beautiful. Sitting yourself up, we're gonna come into that half straddle. Left leg comes in, right leg goes out long. Inhale, sending your arms up. Exhale, leaning over to your right. Checking in. How are you feeling compared to about 40 minutes ago? Inhale, coming up. Hands to ribcage, twisting yourself over the front leg and then bowing forward. If you wanted to go for the twist, left hand reaches on the pinky edge side. Forward fold. So oftentimes what I notice here is that your rib cage is still shifted sideways towards the front of the room. And I really want the torso to keep shifting constantly. That left rib cage is reaching more for the right side of the right outer thigh. And then inhale coming up walking ourselves down to center. This is probably gonna be a 15 minute class. I don't think I can get us done in three more minutes. I'm sorry if you need to finish now. This can be your last pose and then you can do a little Shavasana. Otherwise, it's gonna be a 50 minute vinyasa. Don't ask me why I picked 45. I have ideas. <laughs> I don't think most people are complaining. We're at home in our sweatpants probably, you know. Notice if your left and right sit bone are down on the ground, if you wanted to go into both legs wide straddle, feel free to kick both legs out long, coming down to a block or forearms down to the ground, maybe reaching your elbows away from each other and resting your belly to the ground. This is the biggest version of the pose. Okay, so we're gonna do a little core work here Sitting yourself back up, bring your feet together, knees go wide, butterfly pose. Let's see which way I can show you this pose. <laughs> and then inhale, come into boat. Exhale, butterfly legs, shift your weight forward. Your hands are gonna stay in this forward position as you shift your weight back into boat and then back forward into butterfly. So you notice your knees go together and your knees go wide. You're working on hip mobility here and core strength. I'll just give you a different angle in case you're a visual learner and you have no idea what's happening here. And you can keep your hands straight and just push them away from each other and together again. It's up to you. Okay, let's do three more. Rocking back and forth on the sit bones, 
anterior to posterior. Whew, last one. And then we're gonna come into our boat pose for three, two, one. Exhale, okay. So I'm gonna take us into our peak pose right here. Firefly pose. I know. <laughs> so firefly pose starts with having, it's like crow pose, but our arms are behind our legs. So when we were doing that dragon pose, dropping our shoulder underneath our knee, that was preparing ourselves to get weight on our arm. So if you have blocks, these can be really handy if you're not used to um, firefly. The problem with blocks is you're gonna be higher off the ground. So if you have a lot of fear in crow that you're gonna fall on your face or side crow, then maybe don't use blocks and just deal with having a little bit more limited range in your hip mobility, knowing it's gonna take time. Or if you have a pillow nearby, grab a pillow, place it in front of your face. My dog is sleeping on ours, okay? So you bring your blocks out, shoulder distance apart, hands come down to the blocks, and you can either keep your hands flat, or if it feels better for you, you can wrap your fingers around the edges of the block. Now, by no means do you need a block. You can bring your hands down to the ground, that's perfectly fine. I'll show you both ways. So the first way, hands come down, lift the hips, have a soft bend in the knees, and then you take a wider stance as you start to shift your feet forward. And eventually you want your feet to be in front of the block. So you might have to heel toe, heel toe, to get your feet there. And you see you have to dip the shoulders, dip the shoulders. Once you're there, bend the elbows and start to lean your hips back. So now you're sitting on your arms. All your body weight is on your arms. If you keep leaning your body weight back, keep leaning the body weight back as your chest shifts forward, uh-huh, and then maybe your feet float. And you might fall on your butt, look what happens. Not so bad, right? Okay? So if you're using the blocks, try that. We're gonna go one more time, Fuji Padasana. I'm not gonna use the blocks this time, so if you have more openness in your hips, feel free. Hands come down. Lift the hips enough so you can do that little walk walking your feet forward until they're in front of your fingertips, and then you heel toe, heel toe, your feet closer together, your hips will lean back, your gaze will shift up and forward, sternum up. Maybe you cross your legs over each other and hold here, resting your body on your triceps. Or maybe you straighten your legs for firefly. So reach all your toes energetically forward, forward, forward. Claw the ground, uh-huh. Keep pushing your legs into your triceps and your triceps into your legs to lift the hips a little higher for one more breath. And then exhale, find your way down by bringing your legs back together and then sliding your way down. Ooh, good job, how'd it go? Not at all, no, <laughs> next time. Or maybe you did it, yay. Either way, give yourself a pat on the back. But that pose is crazy. Okay, let's find our way down onto our backs giving yourself a hug. Shifting your hips left to right. Reaching your arms up overhead, wrist circles here. Reversing direction. Shake, shake, shake. Planting your feet down to the ground, we're gonna do one back bend. Rooting your heels down, inhale, lift, bridge pose. Maybe you shimmy your shoulders closer together to interlace your fingers. Maybe you're feeling like going into wheel, go ahead. We're gonna be here for five breaths. Wherever you chose to go, one back bend. Working on creating a little bit more length between the bottom ribs and the hip bones. Exhale as you slowly release everything down to the ground. Knees draw to chest, give yourself a hug. Arms go out wide, recline supine twist. Knees fall to one side as you gaze to the opposite side. If you want to feel a little bit deeper of a stretch along the spine, take your left hand to the top hip, 
Well, I guess it depends. <laughs> my knees are on my left side. So I'm gonna take my left hand to my left hip, draw down, right arm reaches up overhead. It's the opposite if you did the other side, right? And then exhale, switching sides. So if your knees are to the right, eventually you're gonna take your right hand to your hip. If your knees are to the left, you're gonna take your left hand to your hip, okay? That's only if you wanna do a little bit deeper of a stretch. Exhale, Shavasana pose, allowing your arms and legs to reach out long. And as always, feel free to stay in as long as a Shavasana that you need. I'll be here for about a minute before I close the practice. But feel free to ignore my words and stay in your Shavasana on your back. You can just close your laptop and lay here, feeling your breath, finding your happy place. I'm going back to my beach. I hope to see you there one day. Want to stay in Shavasana, stay in Shavasana. Otherwise, inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Rolling to one side. And pushing yourself up slowly, head comes up last to a comfortable seat. Bring your hands together, heart center, eyes closed. And if you'd like, joining me and everyone who joined us in one OM to close our practice together. Inhale. Exhale everything out. Deep inhale. come to forehead, be light and shine, hands come back to heart, always back to our heart, be light and love, namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me, I hope you have a lovely spring break or Monday and I will see you next Monday.